to a question around skills uh, and whether you think there are skills, like very specific skills that we neglect during the whole PhD training program that you actually think are so important for people to consider as they're wrapping up their PhDs. As I said, I had been formally trained on supervision, but you see, that's a very mechanical kind of training about content, feedback, and so on, you know. But there is the human relation side of supervision, which I think is actually at the core of supervision, <laughs> you see. Um, and, and, and that's something I, I, I struggled with. That's something I, I, I had to learn, you know, with, from students, really. Um, and, and that often um, meant that you just had to learn some broad outlines, some bright strokes, you know. But each student comes with their own histories, with their own specificities. You see, and, and how do you relate to them? So that for me was important. And the second one is applying for grants and, you know, and stuff like that, because I had orientation issues, you know, I had, you know, not been too keen on those things, but you had to, I mean, <laughs> you have to apply it now. And so, you know, learning academic speak, academic language, yeah? <laughs> you know, um, how, how you, 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 you tap into, so just to set an example, you know, you're writing something and you're pitching for uh, um, a grant which is linked to the SDGs, you know, which of the goals do you, you know, you know, you know, the academic speak, how do you do that, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and that's something one had to really learn, you know, from scratch, um, you know, um, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and, and also having to deal with, with university bureaucracy, I was never prepared for it, mm. um, I, I, I had some really trying moments, you know, where you have, uh, bureaucrats trying to do their job, insisting on you know, a certain kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> thing for the university. And you're thinking, no, but this is not what is good for the intellectual project. There's a project that we have to do, and, you know, this thing will completely uh, dis dis disrupt what we're trying to do. Oh. And, and learning how to negotiate that, uh, learning how to bargain, um, and unfortunately, learning how to dangle carrots and sticks, and, you know, and, and you know, learning how to... <laughs> how to do things you would ordinarily kind of disapprove of, you know, like saying, well, if you don't agree, then we all live it, we all lose it, kind of. <laughs> so, um, how to threaten you know, come again. Learning how to threaten people. Is that <laughs> yeah. So, so that was, that was, that was a learning curve. And I think I, I'm still learning that to be honest, because, um, there are people you maybe have very good relations with, but then when it comes to these things, you're like, oh, very adamant on, on, on certain positions and you also have to learn to have a straight face until after the, after the meeting. You know? I think skills that are very important for positions after your PhD and that you're not necessarily trained in or get support in while you're doing a PhD is things like uh, fund uh, fundraising, writing funding proposals, knowing where to look for funding, how to work in collaborations when you are thinking about uh, proposing projects with people in other places in other universities. I think those are sort of practical skills, how to negotiate um, that would be really helpful to, to train and to really practice during your PhD already. It's kind of assumed, right? In, when you're a PhD student and I, from my experience more here than where I did my training, it's assumed that you will just do all those things. Uh, but those things require uh, training to become good at it and or at least some support in, you know, uh, hearing, getting feedback on whether you are doing things right, where you can check and bounce off strategies, ideas that you have. Um, and those skills, I think, will also in jobs outside of academia at the moment, um, yeah, will be important. Someone who is a student who is completing their PhDs and is also not very hopeful about the job market, as you know, not just in the academy now, I think with COVID, especially the job market is just not looking very good for a lot of people, whether you have a PhD or you don't. What would you say to that student that at that moment where they're completing the PhD, uh, they're confused, they're going through all the emotional things you've just talked about right now? that people go through when they're wrapping up a PhD, but you still want to encourage them not to lose hope and to complete the race. What would you say to that student? So my strongest advice would be don't pin your hopes in 
academia alone in terms of your immediate career path. Mm -hmm. There are still spaces out there where there is serious, serious and rigorous uh, intellectual debates, um, similar to what happens in academia, which one can occupy and still be productive intellectually and still publish papers and still be relevant in terms of, uh, you know, whatever this, whatever subject that uh, uh, you are interested in. My advice would be um, to go back to why the PhD. Yes, we have these pressures. We need to, to, to survive. We need to make sure that we make an income. We need to pay our rent. Uh, we, you know, we need food. But I think there's something, this might sound idealistic, but I think there's something very special about having the opportunity to learn something about society. I think there's really something special about it. So yes, things might look bleak, uh, uh, but I think the PhD process and what we hope every PhD will come up with is to show us a little light, you know, to, to, to guide our path so we can understand things better. Um, and what this moment calls for, I think, is a fundamental rethinking of the way societies run, the way we relate as human beings. Um, this notion that, you know, consumption is endless. This notion that we are all atoms, we have no connection. Now, just my breath can, can pose a threat to another person, right? So, so it means that the very idea of community, you know, has to be retaught in a more solidaristic sense. And therefore, the question of knowledge for what becomes important, right? Yes, we have all these basic human needs, but I think there's something sacred about knowledge. There's something about knowledge which is beyond the producer. So we do not produce it as individuals, we produce it in communion with others. So, so my advice to, the, to, 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 to colleagues who are working on their PhDs really is to be realistic about the reality, but then to go back to the fundamentals. Why? And to what extent can this moment help us you know, to, to rethink society and even this question of jobs? And, and that's why I think um, when I was talking to my students whose works were so distant from, from COVID or anything, it's about, but what does the moment tell you in your work? Because we have difficulty going to the field, right? Difficulty securing finances. So what does it tell you? How do you methodologically reflect about the present moment? And how does the present moment begin to reshape the way you think about your work? Because this is not a fleeting moment. It's, a, it's an epoch that will define the next, I don't know how many years. And so what do we make of this disadvantage, this seeming disadvantage in the work that we do? So that's what I would say to colleagues who, who are having this very real existential question. Firstly, I think it's good to build the relations, closer relations with the communities, even whilst they are studying. Hopefully the, the studies uh, have a way or in a way is related or can, can, can make a contribution to the communities. So it would be good for, for such students to now and then uh, give feedback to communities, update on, on what they are doing and uh, what they hope to, to do with their studies and uh, how those, I mean, what they are learning will contribute in, the, in their communities. So that is important because uh, if you do that, you, you, you build a relationship with the communities and uh, the communities would know that uh, we have a resource that is there that we can tap on uh, now and then when there is need. What helped me a lot in the end is um, I had also built sort of my own support network. It was a very small group, but I really, I didn't write alone. I went with specifically one friend, Karen is her name. We sat in the library together every day. And I imagine now in an online environment, I would say, try and connect with somebody every day to, you know, just either raise a glass of wine. Okay, that's even that's a bit complicated <laughs> these days. Maybe a, a cup of tea. Um, but yeah, try and get... Um, really really pay attention to a support network that helps you to get through it because you're smart enough to do it you're disciplined enough to do it 
uh, but you're also only just human. So you need to laugh with somebody or cry with somebody during the whole process. That really makes a big difference. And, th and that will, that made a big difference uh, for me.